Uh, Ooh, that was close. All right, so oops, one more popped in. All right, anybody joins after now, I'm gonna have to catch them at a 15 minute mark. Uh, let's go ahead and share the screen. Now, start here. Okay. All right. Uh, greetings, scholars. Greeting you. Greetings, YouTube. Uh, let me see. As far as announcements, so what? We're at the end of week six, right? So just uh, as a courtesy, remember that exam two will become available right before week eight, right? So we have this week. We have next week over the next section, and then after that will be exam two over weeks five, six, and seven. Uh, also, this is a this this course has a lab component, so just be sure that you're you're following the instructions of um, my colleague Dr. Lamar, and you're making your way through the material. As always, this is remote asynchronous, so if you've gotten your attendance credit, you're not obligated to stay. Um, you know, I'll leave it at that for now, um, and then. You know, as usual, if you have questions, um, the best is like to unmute yourself to get my attention. The intent is that class time is used as office hours. I just feel it. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I just feel it with uh, lecture and the homework. So, what I'd like to do today is I was consider I was going back and forth on. Um, mm -mm. Can I just do a new? Then we can break this out. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do today is go th start making my way through as much of the homework corresponding to this section. So I'm just I'm just loading the homework right now. Um, again, I can go over specific ones, but if there aren't specific ones, then I'm just gonna go through as many as I can as soon as I get this thing loaded. I didn't think to even load the homework until we started just now. So that's that's what I'm doing. Uh, I can't think of any real other real major announcements. Um, hopefully you all are like, I encourage you to work together. I encourage you to seek out the tutors. Um, you know, all you, you really just have to ask for support. You've already paid for the tutor, so you don't, there's no additional money that has to come out there. Uh, why do these look different? Oh, with lab, okay, that's fine. Oh, we're gonna go here. Go ahead and see if we got any stragglers before I come back. Okay, I'll go ahead and get them. This one. This one. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And again, I'll check attendance again around the 15 minute mark. Come on. All right. So, my device is being a little bit temperamental today. I uh, will work on section 1.5, transformation of functions. Let me see there, it looks like there are 20 questions. So we'll get through as, as many of them as we can. Again, if anybody would like to me to jump to a specific one, it just has to be requested. Uh, let's go like this. Uh, maybe we can highlight this. Describe here, and I know I'm gonna be using this for a little bit. Let me do one other thing. Cut off some of the background, background noise. All right. Yeah, I had a wild experience with um, 
I just cut off the air filter. And like, so I'm in the basement and I recently like pulled up this carpet that had been there for five to 10 years, somewhere in that range. I mean, that carpet and like after cleaning and vacuuming, that carpet had so much like gunk in it. But when I pulled it up, it made me sick. I was like, whoa, I definitely need an air filter. So we got one. And um, like, I mean, I had like flu-like symptoms. I thought I was going to die. Like this was just like a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. Uh, but then um, I got the air, fil air filter and the next day I was, it was like nothing had even happened. I saw like the air quality thing is a real thing. Like, but I already knew that that was going to be the case. So I was like, we were kind of prepared for it a little bit, but yeah, it's, you know, it's no joke anyway, but yeah, I knew what I needed to do. As soon as we started pulling to the carpet, I was like, I got, I got to get an air, fil air filter anyway. So back on track, let me see, describe the transformations that the produce the graphs of G and H from F. So the base function here is the square root function, right? Square root of X. So to go from, uh, F to G, we added a four outside our basic function, all right? So outside manipulations typically cause a vertical change and follow our intuition. So if we're adding four outside the basic function, that's like adding four to the Y's. So each Y, the X's stay the same, but the Y's are going up by four. So that transformation is going to cause a vertical shift up, shift four units up. So that's going to be D. I guess I could do a multiple choice. I kind of want to do that. I'm going to make a poll real quick. I think I got one that's ready to go because I want you guys to get a little, I want you guys to be a little bit more interactive. Uh, so I'm going to hop over to Zoom. Let me see if I can do like this. And then I would like to do like this. That's looking good. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Polls. And it should be one, right? Which is the correct one? Let's launch it. Okay. So whenever we have multiple choice. So for instance, for this part B, I just started a poll on Zoom. And here, let's do it like this. We'll do them side by side. Like this, one and two, all right? Uh, I feel like this is okay. You can kind of see this, uh, but we can't see the original. Okay, so for part B, um, I guess maybe if I zoom out some, that'll, that might help. You know, I was trying to avoid zooming out. Let me see one other thing. Okay, so we did part A. So there is a live poll, right, uh, on Zoom, right? So you, you, can, you can see the live uh, material. So for part B, we're starting with the, root, the basic function square root of X minus five. We're subtracting a five on the outside of our basic function. So for part B, is part B, is the, the result for part B is an A, B, C, or D, all right? All right, we got one vote for D, shifts five units down, okay? We got one person. We got 13 participants. I need at least 50% 50, 50 participation. Okay, we got two, 15%. Yeah, I like I like the live polls. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it ride. We need at least what's 50% of 13, right? Six and a half. Oh, we gotta vote for C to the left. Hmm. Interesting. Let's get a couple of more. This this is anonymous. Nobody sees your results. You can, I think you can change your results as well. Oh man, y'all got you guys are making me nervous. Oh no. <laughs> so remember, outside manipulations affect the Y value. So it causes a vertical change, right? So if you're looking at C, you know, how many we got? We're at 30%. I still need, I need like three more people to uh, vote A, B, C, or D for part B. I might have to go back and like change some attendance stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, man. Come on, guys. Let's see. I don't know. I mean, I probably could find out who's participating. I need three more people at least. Okay. I might have to, I'm going to, I might have to find out who's not here. I might have to do a roll call. Like this is part of attendance. I just need three more people. Come on, guys. All right. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, go back. I might have to Mark some people is like not here. Oh, there we go. I was like, come on, come on. See, come on. <laughs> Two more. Let's go. 46. I need one more. I think we only need one more. You guys are making me nervous. Why are you guys putting C? I think you're just putting anything. Okay, 54%. Oh, no, C should not be right. If I were voting, I'm going to vote for D. So let's go D. Um, down, right? 
All right. So you guys are making me nervous to see. I said it was vertical, but, you know, I feel like you might just be doing something random, but that's okay. Um, all right. So let's give this one a go, right? Um, let me see if I can clear the poll. If I hit end, um, relaunch, uh, launch. Cool. All right. So we got a fresh poll. Let's see. Describe the transformations that produce the graphs of E and H. Okay. So F, we're starting with the absolute value of 11 times X, all right? So remember, absolute value, the basic shape there is a V, right? And notice we multiply the inside of our basic function by 11, right? So in the previous example, outside manipulations caused a vertical change. It affected the Ys without affecting the Xs. This one is, is multiplied on the inside or manipulated on the inside. So it should affect the Xs without affecting the Ys. Um, and it should be the reverse of our intuition. So uh, to go from, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so so here, let's back up. The base, we're starting with absolute value of 11X. And then for part A, we're multiplying the outside by a negative, right? So for part A, we're doing the outside manipulation. So piggybacking off the previous, and I'll keep chattering until I see 50% participation. Um, and if you want to see more, that means, you know, we got to get through this a little bit faster. Otherwise, we're just going to waste everybody's time, uh, which I don't really want to do. Um, but we're starting with absolute value of 11x, right? And so for part A, we're doing an outside manipulation, which means it's going to change our y values. If it's only going to affect our y values, that means it should be a vertical change, right? And then so it's like our y's are going from positive to negative. Our y's are going from positive to negative. I need like two more people. So our Ys are going from positive to negative. I might need to recheck attendance. Only reason I'm not rechecking attendance is because the original agreement was that you don't have to say. That's the only reason I'm doing it. But I might, I might go back and change that because I need you guys to engage a little bit more. Okay, we're at 50. Okay, so I'm going to blindly accept A, right? I'm just going to blindly go with it. I'm not even going to check it. Oh, A isn't correct. All right, so let's let's check B since we get another opportunity. Let's see, B. All right. All right, guys. So, okay, so part B, right? So in part A, in part A, we multiplied the outside by a negative and it caused a vertical change, right? So it's, if it's changing vertically, it flipped, the Y's went from positive to negative, it flipped vertically. Uh, let me end the poll and relaunch it. Relaunch. Relaunch, okay. So we got a fresh poll for part B, let's go. Boom, I'm liking this. Er, er, okay. <laughs> So, so for part B, and I'm going to chatter until I see 50%. So that means we need like six people. Uh, for part B, now we're multiplying the inside by a negative, right? We're causing an inside change, which means it should only affect the X's and not affect the Y's, which means it should be a horizontal, horizontal change, right? So, and it's like the X's are going from positive X to negative X, all right? I see we got one. I need like five more people. Even if you guess, again, this is anonymous. It's, it's totally okay. But again, if you want to see more questions, we got to get through this a little bit faster. Um, it's anonymous. Nothing happens if you get it wrong. I'm going to, once we hit the 50% mark, I am going to go with whichever one is correct, uh, whichever one is the highest vote. Okay. All right. I'm... So I hope I know you guys think it's funny, <laughs> which it kind of is, but it's I think you guys are wrong, right? B, right? Reflecting the y-axis, we said, you know, so I mean it's fine. You know, I don't know if you're doing it on purpose or not. It's okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But just, you know, just be careful because I don't know, this society, like this society, this day and age, like gl glamorizes ignorance. And then you get into this, you get lulled into this false sense of, you know, making ignorance popular, right? And so then when it comes time for you to not be ignorant, is you can't turn it off, right? So the next thing you know, you get caught lacking. And the next thing you know, you get tricked, you get duped, you get taken advantage of, right? So it's all, it's all fun and games initially, but then, you know, just be careful about being lulled into a false sense of security. Let's look at this one, because again, that's, 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 that's what's basically what's happening, you know? Like, um, I'm gonna relaunch this. I saw this, I saw this uh, post about TikTok 
And this guy was saying, who owns TikTok? And I think it's owned by this company in, in China. And then, you know, it's some something, some government, something with the Chinese government. And then it's like what they allow Americans and people that are outside of China to see on TikTok, it promotes, you know, ignorance and stupidity, you know, drink this poison challenge or whatever, you know, beat yourself up challenge. But then they don't allow their people to watch that stuff. They don't allow, they don't allow their youth to watch that what because they have algorithms and they filter it right so what they allow their youth to see is they promote you know things that actually strengthen them so they'll promote like you know people doing well in school uh people getting like you know just anything that that strengthens their youth that's what they allow their youth to see but then for the youth outside of china they allow them to see self-destructive behavior and they encourage and they promote self-destructive behavior this whole um social media thing is like no joke like it seems, it seems very innocent and nonchalant because it's the internet and you're alone when you're engaging that stuff. But so many people engage it, and like you can see, like with Trump and like um, the fake news narrative, how he was able to rise to power through social media. Nobody saw it coming. Maybe Trump did a little bit, but you know he was positioned where he could take advantage of. It. You know, and so now it's like you have all these people that. It, it's like the truth. It, it, I'm having a hard time saying this because it's not 100% true, but it's almost as if, as far as people are concerned, the truth doesn't matter. Where in reality, obviously, the truth is going to stand the test of time, but there's this battle between truth and lies, right? And so it's like right now, it seems like there is a push or this is this thing about it doesn't matter what's true or not. It's just what everybody agrees on, right? But that doesn't that doesn't last. Right. If everybody agrees on a false narrative, the, the trouble with, you know, false narratives is that it, it, it will fall. It has a weak point. Not to not to say the truth doesn't have a weak point. But, you know, with the false narrative, there's always an opening or there's some hole that can be taken advantage of. And oftentimes it's the people in power that are that that are taking advantage of the hole to, to control the masses and like get things in their favor. It's a wild thing. It's really, really interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, but that's math. Like that's math. Math is all about proving things, you know. And like if 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 you can if you can accept a lie and just believe anything, then anything is possible. Like you can just do whatever you want to do to a degree, right? But it, again, it always has this Achilles heel that's just waiting. And it's like a lot of times it's like a ticking time bomb because when it's exposed, everything that's built on that lie falls. If you have money and your livelihood built on that lie, it can all be taken away. Right. It can all be taken away. So this is why I study mathematics. Like, you know, not to say that it can't happen with the truth, but your chances of it happening are far lower when you're when you when you're truth when you're dealing truths versus when you're dealing lies and manipulation and stuff like that for personal gain and nefarious gain, then the chances of you being, you know, the minute somebody gets a chance to, to take you over, they will. Versus when you're you're working on like the win-win and trying to take care of everybody your chances of somebody coming at you like that are drastically reduced because even if you fall, there's going to be somebody else there to kind of watch your back. The chances of somebody watching your back and giving you a heads up are much higher. You have a much greater chance of getting support when you support others versus when you're all about the self, your chances of getting support are drastically reduced. Like that's just how I feel, but that's my personal thing. Let's get back on track. Um, describe how the graph of the following functions can be attained from one of the basic graphs, right? So, we're starting with three over X, right? Let me see. Okay, okay, okay. So this one's not multiple choice, so we can kind of hold off on the poll for right now. Uh, so I obtain the graph of this, uh, start with the reciprocal function, one over X, okay? Um, multiply. Okay, so if we're, if we're starting with one over X, if we're multiplying the outside by, by three, which is a number larger than one, so that's going to cause a, we're going to stretch it vertically by multiplying each Y coordinate by three, right? Um, that's about the best I can do as far as explanation there. Because I feel like, you know, I feel like there should be questions. Come on, three. Let's see, right? Uh, yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to let that be for now. Let's try another one. Graph the following function. Okay, so here, let me kind of suppress the poll for right now. So we have y equals x squared minus five, right? Notice here, 
the base function is x squared and we subtracted a five on the outside. So that's like taking each y value and subtracting five. So you're just basically starting with a U-shaped curve and basically it's just going down by five. So I'm gonna to click to enlarge the graph. I'm gonna click on my parabola tool and I'm just clicking on the origin for right now. And I wanna shift it vertically down. I'm gonna shift it vertically by negative five because I wanted to go down by five, right? And again, you know, with that whole narrative, everybody is entitled to live their life. As long as you're not harming yourself or you're not bothering nobody else, you know, do, do what you need to do. You know, no, no, real, no true judgment here. I'm not in a place to pass judgment on anybody. Uh, this is just my personal stuff. And I'm just sharing with you guys my, the way I think a little bit. Graph the following function, square root of X plus five. So remember, I think before we said square root of X, the image is the top half of a sideways parabola that plus five is outside the basic function of square root of X, right? Is that that plus five is not under the radicals outside the radical. So that means it's affecting our Y value, which means we should go up by five. And the only one that went up by five, oh, we could have did the poll there. I think we can still do it. Um, let's go ahead and do the poll real quick. Cause I think it's, it's, just, it's just a way for us to engage, right? So it's not so, so passive. So the poll should be available. Which one of these is the only one that went up by five? Should it be A, B, C, or D? Let's try to get to 50%. So I think we need like five more people. Um, okay, cool. It's looking good. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Okay. Mm, okay. We can do that. That might be interesting. We need three more. Two more. Okay. All right. So while we wait for the final two, uh, there's, I don't know if the person that chose A is willing to come on board. Um, let's start, let's start with D. And keep in mind, you can always change your answer. And I'm, we're just kind of filling the air until we get 50% participation. Um, can I get somebody from either that chose A or somebody that chose D? Why did you choose what you chose? Like either. I chose D because it's a vertical shift though. Vertical shift, right? I think, let's just go with it. I know we're, we're still missing one more, but we're gonna go with it for now, just for the sake of time. Cool, looks good. Okay, cool, right? So, I have a question for the last question. Oh, let me go back, go ahead. Um, I know number 20 on the homework. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me jump. You said number 20? Yeah. You just want to go through, through it? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So this one says in the given graph, let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. Get a little bit more. Hopefully that's not too distorted. Let's let this kind of be like that for now. So it says, uh, in the given graph, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of a home is given as a function of time. So the x-axis is time and the y-axis is temperature. Zero um, is gonna be like midnight and then these are hours after midnight, okay? So then for part A, it says, at what temperature is the thermostat set during daytime hours? Um, at what temperature is a thermostat set during daytime hours, right? So I think that's the top bar, right? Where this looks like that's 6, 8, 10, 12. So that's like from 10 a.m. 20 to about 8 p.m., maybe 9. What's that temperature? That's 2, 4, 6. So about 75 degrees. Let me see. 75 degrees, right? So during the daytime, it looks like it's set to 75, two, four, six. So let's try 75. This is during the daytime, at what temperature is, is it set overnight? So we said 75 degrees, thank you. Oh, come on, 75, like this. Why is that? Let's see if I can make this brighter. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that keeps getting hit, but that's fine, cool, okay. So then overnight, so if we look at the graph again overnight, that's 52, 54, 56. So that's 54 degrees. Okay, let's try 54. 
The change will. Okay, so it says the homeowner reprograms the thermostat. So they said the temperature, so minus six, right? So the Y value is minus six. So the Y values correspond to the temperature. So that means they're gonna lower the temperature by six degrees, all right? Lower the temperature by six degrees. Okay, we're just gonna go with it for now. Cool. Uh, and then, Choose okay, so the correct graph. So if we're if we're lowering the temperature by six degrees, that means our x values are staying the same, but our y values are going down by six. So instead of that being what 75, it should be what 69. So the image should look the same, but it should go up to 69. And see, I think B went up, so it should be D. Let's go with D. Okay. Uh, and then, so this one, the homeowner reprograms the thermostat to T of T plus five, where the plus five is now inside our function. So that means it's gonna affect the X values and leave the Ys alone. Um, and then if we're saying plus five on the inside, that's gonna, that should shift it to the left, right? By five units. Let me think about it. So if you're like, okay, for instance, if originally, that's weird. T plus five earlier. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, cause it should shift the graph to the left. So that means the temperature should change earlier. Um, but the way I want to explain it is kind of like, kind of weird. So, so I'm not saying it. Uh, it should, five hours five hours earlier all right move the temperature change five hours. because again remember we were saying like the inside manipulation is like the reverse of our intuition uh move the temperature change five hours earlier yeah all right yeah so then the temperature should be the same but instead of that changing at what 10 it should change at five so that that little Increase should be at the six, just before the six um, tick mark. So 75, it can't be B because that's the wrong temperature. Um, and I think D also has the wrong temperature. So it has to be either A or C. Uh, let's see, what's the difference? Oh, okay. It looks like C shifted the wrong direction. A is the one that looks like it shifted the correct direction. So let's go with A. Because we said the temperature needs to change five hours earlier at like five in the morning. So let's go with that one. Okay. Hopefully that was okay. Uh, I totally forgot. Like this, I always do this for the latecomers. <laughs> Let me end the poll. I I'll bring it back up later as we as needed. I know we got some... Um, I just I just forgot. Like that's why you want to try to get in on time because I'll I'll totally get lost in the sauce. And like if, when that 15 minute mark hits, I just be in my own little world. Uh let me get these guys because I know I got some people. Um and like I guess for you guys it's probably not the weekend, but for me, like at the end of the day, this is the weekend for me. So I was like, you know, so I'll be excited, I'm like, okay, <laughs> ready to go. It was like, I just remember being a student um, and getting like senioritis. I still get that as an adult. Where is it still? He must have like got, no, no, here he is. Um, so like, you know, just like, okay, I don't want to work. And I just want to be like, you know, just kind of be to myself. And okay, we have pretty good turnout. I think I got these guys. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, I meant to I meant to check in tennis again at the 15 minute mark and I totally just got distracted. Just yammer. Okay, yeah, 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 that's fine. Uh I see a hand raised. Did we answer that question for the hand that's raised? Mr. McKitty? I think I okay. I'm assuming that it got answered. Uh let's go back to sharing the screen. Sorry guys, I meant like I was saying, I meant to um check attendance again at the 15 minute mark, but I, I totally got distracted. 
Uh, we're just making our way through as many homework questions as we can. And there was a request for the last one. So we went on and did that one. Um, we're gonna just kind of keep going through. So periodically we have a poll. Uh, let's see here, use transformations on absolute value of X to graph the following. Now, notice, uh, let's go ahead and start the poll back. Um, so I think I had it here, like this, start the poll and let's restart it. That's fine, okay. So use transformations. So we have, we're going from absolute value of X to absolute value of X plus one, right? Where the plus one is inside our basic function. Let me zoom out just to make it look a little bit better. Hopefully not zoomed out too far. Zoom in and get that to come back. So I need, I need the thing at the bottom. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but hang on. I got to make sure it didn't change. Sorry, it's my fault. Okay, suppress that. I wish I could get rid of that altogether. We don't need this either. Okay, um, so this one is absolute value of X and we have the plus one on the inside. So we're adding one on the inside, right? Uh, it may have changed, so just kind of check it. Um, we're going from absolute value of X to absolute value of X plus one, where the plus one is on the inside. So if we're adding one on the inside, it should affect our X's and it should be the reverse of our intuition, right? So uh, as soon as I see 50%, maybe um, since we have more students, I'm gonna lower it to like 30%. As soon as I see 30% participation, we'll go with whichever is the highest. So I think we need like one or two more. Let's get one more. And I'm just gonna go with whichever is the highest. Even if we get one more, it's looking like D. So I'm gonna go with D for now and accept it blindly. Cool, All right? Okay, let's go into the, let's do another question. Uh, okay, this one doesn't have multiple choice. Graph the, graph the function by starting with the basic function and then using transformations, okay? Uh, any brave soul feel like they can describe the transformations here? All right, you can kind of, you should be able to see it over to the left. Or like, what's the base function? So, okay. So the base function here is gonna be our parabola. And it looks like there's two transformations, the minus two on the inside and the plus three on the outside. So let's start, I, I chose my parabola and I'm gonna click on the origin. That minus, so when we do multiple transformations uh, in, one, in one graph, the recommendation is to start from the inside and work our way out. So that minus two is the innermost transformation and it says to go to the right by two. So I'm gonna do horizontal shift right by two. And then that plus three is outside so that tells us to go up by three, just like that, okay. So I'm going to go with this. It's just a parabola. We moved it right two and up three. Uh, let's try that again. Parabola, origin, right two, up three. And I need to hit save. That's why that didn't appear last time. Let's, let's try no. Okay, next question. We got a solid 10 minutes. Uh, okay, let's go with this. So transformations, right? We got negative X cubed plus seven. So the base function is X cubed. I'm gonna click on this tool. I'm just clicking on the origin. And I see two transformations. The first one we're gonna address is multiplying the outside of our base function by a negative. So it's like the Y's go from positive to negative. So we wanna flip it over the X axis. And then we wanna go up by seven. Um, where is it? Vertical shift by seven. Okay, let me hit save. So we flipped it vertically and then went up by seven. Let's check that. Right. Okay, use transformations um, to graph the following, right? So this is basically more transformations. Okay, and you know. All right, let's give it a go. So the base function, uh oh, 
This one might be a little bit different. Let me see. Okay, okay. Let me cancel. All right. So with something like this, if we're dealing with a, a U-shaped curve and the way they're having us input this, what's a good idea is to track the, ver the vertex, right? So the innermost transformation, that negative four, tells us to go to the right by four. We're going to do some vertical stretching and flipping. But it says to go right four and then up four, right? So that means our vertex, if we use our U-shaped curve, the vertex should be right four and up four. So I'm gonna put a point there. And then we know it should be opening downward. So let's do when, let's do when X is five, right? So let me see. So when X is five, five minus four is one squared is one times negative two is negative two plus four is two. So when X is five, Y should also be two, right? So if you look at it, um, we went right four, we stretched it vertically by a factor of two. Oh, wait a minute, that one needs to come down, right? Because we said two, all right? When it's five, we got two, right? Okay, we flipped it vertically and then we went up four and we're here. Um, I, what I did, I kind of tracked the vertex because we had a U-shaped curve. So I knew the vertex, we went right for and up for, so I started there. Then I just went to the right by one, right? So when I went right by one, I plugged it in, I found the corresponding Y, and then we got a graph like this. I'm gonna hit save and check. Okay. Notice we had to kind of adjust because we were about to submit the wrong thing. We, we plotted the second point incorrectly, but then we, we caught it in time before we submitted it. All right, so we got a multiple choice. So let's see if we can get the poll going. Um, let's go like this instead of distorting the screen, but I know you can't see D. Let me relaunch the poll. Uh, launch, okay. And, and it just it just adds a little bit of flavor to, you know, cause I know this stuff is boring, right? I get it, I acknowledge it, you know. I haven't really tried to make it more interesting. This is a, a minor attempt, right? So I'm a, since we have 17 people, I'm gonna chatter a little bit until we get about 30% participation. It says we're beginning with the absolute value of X and we want to identify the graph after doing manipulations, right? So there is one vote for B and I'm a, again, I'm gonna kind of keep chattering. I want at least 30% participation, um, higher would be better. Uh, let's see. So if we're starting with absolute value, now, I, I personally see three transformations, right? I see three transformations. Now, if we start out, if we work our way from the inside to the out, the innermost transformation is that plus one, right? So if we started with the V, with the vertex is at the origin, if we, tr if we just track the origin, right? The vertex, I mean. So it, that plus one says to go left one, and then that plus four says to go up four. But we also multiplied the outside by a negative, so we should flip top to bottom. Right. So if we did it in the proper order, if we start with the vertex at the origin, we go left one, then we flip top to bottom and then we go up four. So then which of these guys, one more time, started with the V at the origin, the vertex at the origin. We went left one, flip top to bottom, and then we went up four. Right. OK, we got a 30 percent. We got 30 percent people saying B. So I'm going to go with B and it's getting higher. It's dynamic. I really enjoy that. I don't know why, but it's fun, right? It's like, so the thing with this dynamic thing, and we I see we got about five minutes. The reason it's interesting is because it's kind of treating you guys like a unit. We got 17 people in this in this uh, chat. And so it's like, it's like hive mentality, right? Um, I don't think I saw this on Black Mirror, but, and it kind of was there a little bit, but I definitely saw it in this show on Disney Channel. It was like, year 1 million or something like that where it was kind of like playing around with with uh okay we'll talk about this one in just a moment relaunch it was playing around with um like future technology the things called di dying sphere where you know if we were trying to be an inter inter intergalactic or interstellar uh society and we needed like unlimited power source a dying sphere is where basically you have a star and you have solar panels completely surrounding the star. So you absorb as the maximum amount of energy from that star as possible, right? It's a, that concept is wild. But the reason I'm excited about the poll is because there's this thing called hive mentality. One concept is 
you know, in the future, it's exciting, but it's also scary because there are some nefarious stuff that you can do. But the benevolent stuff is kind of exciting where in the future there might be, you know, like basically brain chips or whatever chips inside people's brain. But what it does, it allows us, it's like having the internet inside your mind. So you don't need a computer. So we can communicate, send text. Like imagine having your computer with the internet and everything, but it's all in your mind. And it black, if you haven't seen the series on Netflix called black mirror, check it out because it's so trippy. It's so trippy where, you know, if you got this chip in your mind, yeah, it's powerful because now you have, like, if you watch Naruto, the hive mentality where you have pain and you had the six pains, but they were being controlled by a remote guy. I mean, they were, they were practically unstoppable. Like you, and you have six people running around, but it has one mind. That's powerful. Like you don't even need walkie talkies. They just have the same thought and it's controlled by one person, this whole ultimate puppet master. Right. But then the drawback is, you know, now it's infringing on like human will. And it's, it, it, it's like, it's the, the baseline for great story writing. I think it makes great story writing. It has a lot of powerful benevolent potential, but also a lot of powerful malevolent potential, right? It's like, it's just so wild. And so when, when I see this like dynamic poll, we already got polls for the next one. Um, it's like, it's, it's kind of fringing on that whole hive mentality. Again, we got 17 people and it's like, what are, what are we thinking? Like, okay, right now I know that 18% of, of, the, of our total brain capacity is choosing B, right? Now, we don't know if it's right or wrong, but again, it's treating 17 people as one unit, right? I, I, to me, I, I think that's fantastic. I think it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Okay, okay. So now let's look at this one. So this is called, uh, and I see the time, we got a solid two minutes. Uh, this is called the greatest integer function, right? It's a, it's, it's a step function. It's called, a, it's like, um, what the, what the greatest integer function is, is whenever you have an integer, you, you just take that integer. And then whenever you have a, a, a number between two integers, it the answer, the result, or the output collapses to the integer to the left, right? So this is the lower integer. So for instance, if you have like 2.6, the greatest integer less than or equal to 2.6 would be 2. If you had 2.999999999, the greatest integer less than or equal to 2.99999 would be still two, right? So whenever you have a number that's between two integers, you take the integer to the left. Suppose you had negative 1.56, right? The greatest integer less than or equal to 1.56, the integer to the left was actually negative two, right? So, so that's what this symbol is. This is called the greatest integer function. And it's called a step function because when you look at the graph, it looks like the steps on the staircase, okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, so the greatest integer normally starts at the origin. Now, the transformations that's going on here, we went right three, and then we did a vertical stretch by a factor of two, right? Uh, so I think C and D were, were smushed vertically, so it can't be C and D because those have been smushed. The staircase got smushed. But we said we wanted to go right by three, okay? If we look at B, it looks like B, I think B went to the left by three. All right, let's, let's pick a point. Let's test the point. I don't think it's C or D. If we test the point, all right, vertical stretch by factor of two. Um, if, if we're saying it's B, for instance, when X is, what is that? One, two, three. When X is negative three, the result should be zero. Right? So if we plug in negative three in here, negative three minus three, is um, negative six, all right? So, so it can't be B. I think, I think the correct one is A. All right, I'm gonna go with A just because we're out of time. Okay. Uh, so we didn't we didn't talk about greatest integer together, right? I was tempted. That's why I was kind of tempted to go through more of the lecture. But again, that recording is there, so we did as much of the homework as we could. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I actually enjoyed the, the poll. I actually got to hear back from you guys and it was anonymous. So there was nothing, you know, you don't have anything to lose. You get to engage a little bit, kind of like a little game, right? Uh, and then you have this whole hive mentality thing as a unit, you know, for the 9 a.m. course, as, as a collective, you know, what is everybody thinking, right? All right, so that one was interesting. Um, are there any burning questions before we go our separate ways? Okay, we do have some activity in the chat. I'm going to suppress my screen share. Let me check the chat real quick. Uh, yeah, that's fine. There's no worries. How would you do this problem? Um, 
Did we answer your question for the one that said, Mr. Gray? Did we answer your question? Okay, I'm gonna assume that we that it got answered. Um, are there any other questions before we go our separate ways? Okay. Uh, I don't think we took any notes. Let me check one more time. We didn't we didn't write anything. Yeah, so this is the end of week six. We did uh, 1.5 transformations. Uh, next week, we're going to do the next section. So week six, you know, is, is wrapped up. You have your homework. You have your quiz. Um, I just, just want to remind people that during week eight, that's essentially midterms. Um, and that's going to be our exam, too. Uh, I usually, I think I made all the exams available that Sunday night before week eight is going to be available that, uh, at 11 a.m., but that's not for like a whole nother week. Um, so if there are any burning questions, we're actually going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, uh, stay dangerous. Peace. Thank you. Yep, yep. Take care.